Joe here with Pasture View Rentals along with Kelly. Good morning. We are going to do a golf cart tour of Fort Wilderness. Um, we're going to start here at our campsite, go all the way around to the front entrance where you check in, and then um, go from there and go through most all of the park. I don't know if we'll hit all the loops, but we'll hit quite a few. Um, talk about what we like in each one, what we don't like. Quite frankly, there's not much that we don't like um, when it comes to any of the loops. Um, we've got pretty much, you know, they're all very similar. Uh, a lot of it's kind of location. All of them have a bus stop at the end, so if you don't have a golf cart or bicycles or whatever, you can um, certainly, you know, use the public transportation system that Disney has in place here. It works really well. It's very easy and it's really convenient. They um, nice clean buses and they run pretty frequently. I don't know the exact time. Um, but I'm sure it's something that Disney publishes. But um, so we're going to turn this camera around and give you a um, probably a time lapse of of the tour, and we'll talk it over on the voiceover. So. So we're right outside of the outpost reception, or the reception outpost, excuse me, here at Fort Wilderness. Um, they have a concierge service here. So when you get checked in and if you need anything, help with reservations, golf cart, rentals, that sort of stuff, this is where you go. This is right here at the front. Um, you can see it's pretty busy. We're just now um, like nine o'clock this morning. So um, from here, you can see the front gate down there. Um, it's where you come in um, generally speaking as long as you have your magic band it's really easy to get in you just touch to the um, little Mickey head and the gate comes up if you are just getting here they will reroute you that way behind uh, the reception outpost here which there are several covered areas um, where you check in your camper so you can pull right through they accommodate uh, you know really large big rigs uh, all the way down to you know the smallest pop-up um, and even I believe uh, tent campers can go through there um, so I'll walk this way you can get it's really quick um, the process took us maybe 15 minutes or so um, even just sitting uh, in line uh, there were maybe 10 cars ahead of us and got us through the gate and rerouted us to um, the reception outpost uh, and go through here they set up and linked our magic bands to our Disney account and our um, uh, reservation and all that from here uh, like I said maybe maybe 15 20 minutes it was sitting there um but it was really quick didn't have to get out of the motorhome nothing um, they did it all from their little kiosks so um 
from here, you can look across. This is the kind of overflow parking lot and where people come to check in for um, the cabin rentals as well. So zoom out a little bit here. Um, straight across there is the, um, uh, I think, Triple, triple O-D Ranch. Uh, I think that's how we'll ride by. But it's where they have horses. You can go on a trail ride. Um, they also keep the horses there that they use for Santa's sleigh ride, which is uh, a wagon ride. Um, so from here, we're going to go and do... Uh, go through a couple of the um, uh, circles I'm gonna do the um, premium circle preferred circle I'm sorry they're not circles they call them loops preferred loop premium loop um, the premium meadow loop which is where we are staying so you've already gotten kind of a site tour there um, and I've showed you the kind of the empty sites and stuff like that so um, we'll do that on the golf cart and um, kind of talk about the difference in each one um, and go from there. So straight in front of us is the uh, outpost bus stop. Um, these buses run to all of the what are you doing? It's a one-way. Oh, okay. Um, they run from to all the parks from Disney Spring or to Disney Springs, uh, Hollywood Studios, um, from here to get to Magic Kingdom and Epcot. It's easier to take the ferry down at the settlement um, which um, takes you across to the ferry landing and then to get to Epcot you take the tram to the transportation hub and get on the Epcot uh, monorail um, so to the left up here we're gonna go and go through one of the cabin loops I'm not gonna focus too much on the cabins but we'll show you what the loops look like So there's quite a few cabins um, through here. Um, I, I think there's four or five loops. Uh, also up here on the left will be the um, swimming pool, or one of the swimming pools. Um, it has a little hot tub and all that stuff, so. swimming pool um, it's the wilderness swimming pool they've got a hot tub there it's you know pretty nice size swimming pool all right so here's one of the cabin loops um, all these cabins are basically um, one bedroom in the back I think it has a, a full or a queen bed with two bunks, um, it has a bathroom, a closet, a full kitchen, um, and then a living room area with a fold-out couch. Which, uh, we've stayed in them a couple times. Um, generally like them. Um, since we've got the motor home, it makes more sense for us to bring the motor home um, with us. So each one of these also has an outdoor grill, um, as well as most of them have a picnic table. 
there are quite a few of them that are accessible. They have ramps, so uh, for someone who requires a wheelchair, um, it's certainly feasible. Since they've upgraded a lot of those, I haven't stayed in any, so I don't know how accessible the bathrooms are. Um, however, for the most part, I think at least getting into the cabin is pretty accessible. They're pretty open in the living area and sleeping area. Um, we're pretty well open. So these just loop around, just like all the other loops. So from here, we're gonna go hit up, I think the, um, probably the 1700 loop, or at least that area of loops. Those are the full hookup sites. Um, there's a size difference. However, I don't think it's that great um, in terms of what you can fit in there. Um, it's still full hookup. It still has cable. Um, that sort of stuff. It's also really close to the meadow, which has the bike barn, um, the sing-along, the campfire sing-along that I showed you guys the other day. Um, and so, and then also, just like all the other ones, there's uh, bus uh, stops really close by. So you can hop on that if you don't have a golf cart. Don't want to walk, don't want to ride a bike <clears throat> down to the settlement or up to the outpost. So coming through here, you can see everything's really wooded. Um, it makes it feel a lot more uh, wilderness-like than you would expect from a Disney property. Obviously, everything is well-groomed, well-manicured. But All right, so we're going to take a right right here. The full hookup sites are all within, like, one big area. Um, so we're going to turn into the 1700 loop because it's the first loop on the right. Um, we've stayed here um, a couple times. Um, we like it. It's actually Kelly's favorite um, loop. Um, we The last time we were here, I think it was 2019, it was around Halloween time, so everything was kind of decorated for Halloween. Um, whereas today you'll get to see some Christmas decorations, um, that sort of stuff. So you can see, um, here is an empty site. Here. So you can see, um, not nearly as big as the um, premium sites or the meadow premium sites, but still good size. Um, you know, our motor home is 35 foot and I feel confident that it would be easy to get in. There are some trees along this 
um, but most of them are three or four foot off the road so even backing in a large fifth wheel shouldn't be difficult um, you can see here um, I think what Kelly likes most these are a little bit more open in between however there's more space between these campsites than um, the premium meadow where we're out in the 1400 loop so that makes it nice um, there's also a these each of these loops don't have their own um, uh, comfort station or bathhouse. They share, um, oh no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This one does have its own, but it may share it with the one behind it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll add a correction uh, in text <laughs> if, if I find otherwise. But I know that some of these loops uh, share like this one shares with the loop behind it there's also one in the center of um, all of these loops so you can see that's a pretty large rig that's parked in these um, and it's still convenient enough to where you get full hookup So from here, we're going to take a ride out of here. Um, I'll show you the bus stop that's right outside of this loop, uh, group of loops, rather. Um, there's three routes that run within Fort Wilderness. Um, and they're all, they stay internal, but basically they go from um, the front to the back, and one goes to the... Um, uh, these is an example of wildlife real quick. But one of them goes to the cabins. These turkeys are pretty much everywhere here. Um, as well as deer all over the place. And the squirrels <coughs> are also everywhere. Uh, we saw one yesterday while we were at Magic Kingdom. Uh, hop into a stroller with a little kid. Scared her to death. Uh, but the squirrel just jumped right back out when she started screaming. He didn't didn't mess with it or anything. So um, when this place opened, there was a train that ran through here. Apparently, it was uh, Walt's. Walt Disney's kind of uh, baby. I guess he really loved the trains. I don't know what year they were removed, um, but it would be really cool to see. I would imagine the cost to maintain them would be uh, pretty significant. All right, so we're going to turn in here along with the maintenance guy. This is the loop that we're staying on. This is the premium meadow sites. They've already gotten a site tour. But I'll just give you a, a quick uh, loop around again. And then I think we're going to pick up Kelly, assuming that her she's finished doing her hair. That's why she's not part of this segment of the video. I think she's got some good jokes in store for us for the rest of the ride. Here's an example of an empty site. You can see these are pretty big. I think they're what they call big rig friendly. So they've paved the back part of them, which is normally gravel in the um, full hookup and preferred sites. So they all have cable, they're all full hookup. Um, they all have a picnic table and they all have a charcoal grill, which is nice. Um, I was reading, I, I think in one of my previous videos, I mentioned a, uh, they were really strict on fire pits. And apparently at one point in time, they didn't even allow them at all. But you can have fire pits, basically the ones that you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. They have to have mesh screen around them. 
and in some of the creek side sites you have to have a solid lid whereas the rest of them can have I think a mesh uh, or semi open lid. sweet home for the week uh, we had a pretty pretty serious rain last night so um, it's been wet this morning a couple of our uh, lights and inflatables have deflated I think uh, they're connected to a separate breaker on the main uh, power post I think it tripped which is good good thing it works but um, so I'm gonna have to work on that today I was actually at the when I started this video, I was at the outpost because I was starting, I had to go pick up some, a package from Amazon. So you can have packages delivered here from Amazon. Um, there is a specific address and you put your, uh, put guest and your site number um, in the uh, name line and they'll hold it at reception. They usually, they said they would send a text. Um, I didn't get a text from them, but I did get a uh, text from Amazon. Um, one caveat to that, they do charge a $6 handling fee, so just be aware of that. All right, so um, we are going to head down here and check out the premium sites and what they call the preferred sites. Um, You can see we have a really nice dog park. Um, they do, this is a really pet friendly area. They require leashes and what you clean up after your dogs. Um, additionally, uh, they charge $5 a day for your pets, which considering, um, you know, that you get this really nice dog park and plenty of places to walk, it's probably definitely worth it. Is a joke or what? Alright, Jeff, you want to hear a Disney joke? Yeah, of course. Why is Cinderella terrible at netball? At netball? Netball. I don't know. I'm not even sure if I know what that is. Because she always runs away from the ball. Um, they are what they call 
big rig friendly. Big old Dutch bar there. But just like the premium meadow sites, these are um, basically completely paved. Uh, well, I say paved. They're concrete. So. Which makes it really nice because um, then you don't have to worry about in the hot summer sinking into the asphalt with your hydraulic levelers. You can see there's tons of Christmas decor throughout this loop. Settlement outpost that has the um, ferries and the um, another trading post, and show you the Pioneer Hall where they have the Hoop De Doo Review, which I believe is one of Kelly's favorite shows here on the Disney properties. Um, they also have Crockett's Tavern uh, and the Trails Inn Restaurant. Um, we've had, since we've been here, we had breakfast and we had the dinner menu. It used to be a, uh, buffet. Uh, now they're doing what they call family style, which I think is what all of their restaurants are doing right now with COVID. I'm not sure how that's going to be affected moving forward, but basically you just sit there and they bring you, bring the all you can eat buffet to you. Um, what we found is that it is. It's good food, but it is a, a limited selection as far as what, you know, you were at one point in time able to get, um, you know, and what you would consider a buffet style. Um, but it's good food. I think here they had uh, brisket and baked chicken, sausage, green beans, um, rolls. Um, oh, they had these, um, what they called goat cheese and chive biscuits, which all of us thought were delicious. And then for dessert, they had, uh, brownies with, well, I guess it's a brownie sundae. So brownies with ice cream covered with, uh, had chocolate covered bacon and other toppings on it. So it was really good. Um, so here is the parking for um, Pioneer Hall. Let's see, um, that's Pioneer Hall. And then there is Crockett's Tavern and Trails Inn Restaurant. They also have a, um, uh, um, a pickup where you can order it on your Disney uh, Experience app. And you can just pick it up to go. I forget the name of that place. Was it PJ's? P&J's? P&J's. Um, we've never eaten there. Um, but most people say it's pretty good. So, uh, Just like most all the rest of the Disney parks, uh, we've got quite a bit of uh, Christmas decor. 
here is the uh, playground up here. You can kids can play while they're waiting on their food or waiting to be seated. Um, oh, just as a uh, an aside, you do have to make reservations for all of the Disney uh, restaurants now. Um, at one point in time, you could go put, be put on a wait list, but at this point, um, they are uh, doing reservation only. Um, we found it's pretty easy to do the reservations, right? I mean, yeah, I haven't know, had any issues. We just went on the app, and you can select. If they don't have the time slot you want, you just kind of keep going back. Um, I'm gonna walk down here to the marina real quick. It says no parking. I'm gonna leave Kelly here to guard the the golf cart. Um, although I don't think anybody's gonna steal it. We've been having some issues. So um, this is the easiest way to get to. You have to part in the wind. The weather's not really cooperating. I'm getting pelted with pine needles. Um, but this is the easiest way to get to the Magic Kingdom from um, Fort Wilderness or the campgrounds. Um, so they have a boat. It runs 30 minutes before the parks open to 30 minutes after they close. I think right now, when we were on the boat last night, they were uh, saying they were running till 2. Uh, which is significantly later but apparently there's a, quite a bit going on at all of the resorts so um, you do have to wear masks everywhere inside uh, including inside the boat um, so but it's a really smooth ride it takes I don't know, maybe 10 15 minutes to get over there really easy this used to be a beach they have it all blocked off now I'm not gonna do too much videotaping Disney gets very sensitive um, about what you videotape especially if they have it blocked off there used to be a water park here um, in the 80s and into the 90s it was removed um, you know uh, shortly thereafter um, and has not been reopened at one point everything was still there but it looks like if you look through everything's been cleared off at this point you can take um, what they call the cruisers from um, each of the resorts and basically resort hop through the water. It's really quick. It's almost as fast as going on the monorail. Um, so, kind of give you a, a backside view of this area. So the trading post. Um, this one also has a gift shop and such. So, plenty of golf cart parking, a lot of bicycle parking here as well. So they also provide um, bus transportation um, to the area just outside of this big area is a, a bus stop. Um, their bathrooms pretty easily accessible pretty much everywhere so uh, this is also where Santa's sleigh ride takes off from uh, maybe we'll circle back around and check that out so. all right guys so earlier on the golf cart tour we talked about Crockett's Tavern and Trails Inn Restaurant P&J's and Pioneer Hall um, so we want to take a minute to specifically focus on Pioneer Hall and the show that it contains which is the hoop Dee review um, I think earlier I said that was Kelly's favorite show at Disney um, I think that's true and so that being we're gonna get her to talk about it a little bit give you some facts um, information that's helpful yeah hey guys so like Joseph said it is my favorite um, show here at Fort Wilderness and even at Disney so what is the hoop Dee review so the hoop Dee review is a two-hour dinner show uh, which features everything from singing to dancing to uh, some comedy and some great food. So uh, when we do come here, we look forward to the fried chicken and all of the fixings that come along with it. And Joe's favorite thing is actually the... Uh, the beer refills. Because uh, yeah. unlike everywhere else in Disney, they do refill your beer um, during the show. So it's nice. Yeah, so that makes for a fun time. Um, 
So walking into the Hoop to Do Review is just incredibly special. So you walk in, there's vaulted ceilings, it's rustic, it's just really homey, it's just really beautiful. It's just one of those things that you just have to see and you have to experience here at Disney and at Fort Wilderness. Um, so a fun fact about the Hoop to Do Review, so it actually opened the summer of 1974 and it became a permanent feature September 5th of 1974. So. That's really cool, making it the longest running dinner show in the United States with something like 40,000 shows that it's given over the, um, the last 40 plus 40 years. Plus so, years. Yeah. Long time. Um, yeah, so that's just, that's just a really neat thing to definitely come and, and experience here. So another fun fact, I was actually starring in the show at the Hoop Doo, and when I say starring, I mean I had a 20 to 25 second part and I had one joke, and it was so bad that nobody here remembers. Listen, we'll be selling autographed <laughs> Poopy Doo Review napkins uh, on our website here shortly. Yeah, yeah, let us know if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, so um, we just want to give you like a little short. Uh, it's something that we generally have done. However, this trip, and I think last year as well, it has been shut down. It. Yeah. We're looking forward to it coming back. Yeah, so COVID, COVID put a kibosh on that. So hopefully it'll come back. However, there is still the Crockett's Tavern that's over there, mm -hmm. um, which for breakfast we definitely recommend. Um, like I said earlier on the on the golf cart tour, uh, they've gotten away from the buffet. Um, that's different. The, it is different. Yeah, it's different. The food's still good, and the service is always wonderful. So uh, make sure you hit that up while you're here. Um, so that's about it for this side of the park. Yeah. So, Thanks, uh, until next time. video hope you enjoyed our golf cart tour of the campground here at disney's fort wilderness um, if you enjoyed it we'd love it if you would like and subscribe to our videos we're planning on doing some more content on um, campground tours and some um, instructable videos on our camper maintenance that's coming up as our season begins um, and if you're if you're interested we'd love for you to rent one of our campers 
if you look us up at Pasture View Rentals uh, on Outdoorsy, we've got a, a couple that are gonna start renting in March, and we'd love for you guys to, to take one of ours down to Fort Wilderness. Thanks again. <laughs>